Hey, good morning. Welcome back to All Right, What's Next? Ah, uh, as you can see right here, I did something that I am strictly forbidden to do. And that is sit on the couch in the evening, watch TV with my phone anywhere even remotely near me with Amazon's one click freaking buying option. My phone is to be taken upstairs, put on the nightstand before I sit down on the couch and watch TV. Now, I am the one who has forbidden me from doing that because I am a horrible impulse buyer. And it's like, I will buy shit, it'll just pop into my head. Oh, I fucking need that. If my phone is there, I will buy it. If it's upstairs, like fuck that, I'm not walking all the way upstairs to get my phone to buy something. And I'll forget about it by the time I go to bed anyways. <clears throat> And that's how I ended up with, you know, multiple different PlayStations and Xboxes. But anyways, I bought all of this Craig stuff. Now, I actually need this. I have a project coming up. I guess I don't need it. I could do it, you know, with more traditional joinery and using the table saw to break down the freaking sheet goods and everything. I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm going to be building multiple different cabinets out here in the shop. I'm going to build a... Uh, a spray booth, I'm going to build a, a 3D resin printing station, everything's going to be vented to the outside of the shop and everything to keep fumes and crap out of here because uh, my shop is not ventilated. Uh, the windows are always closed. As soon as it gets warm enough outside that the heater gets shut off when I'm in here, I turn the air conditioner on. So it can get stinky in here if you're using resin, if you're trying to spray paint. It's too cold in the winter to go outside and spray paint, so I'm gonna make a spray booth that's vented. And I don't wanna dick around with trying to do fancy freaking joinery and that to build the cabinets. So I wanted a really nice pocket hole jig set. And if you're like, well, you're a shit carpenter. We know that, that's been established. Uh, but I don't care what anybody thinks. Pocket hole joinery works really well. And if you're not making some sort of heirloom furniture that you're planning to pass down from generation to generation, the shit works really fucking good. Pockhole joinery is great. And then if you've ever tried to break down sheets of plywood on a table saw by yourself without a large outfeed table or anything, it can be a royal pain in the ass. Trying to keep it accurate up against the fence the way you need it, it's a bitch. It's a lot easier with the new table saw that my dad bought and then put in my shop because he doesn't have any room the, the big fucking saw stop over there but it's still a pain in the ass because i don't have an outfeed table and i'm not going to build an outfeed table because where the outfeed table would go is like my primary working area whenever i have something that is too massive to work on my bench here uh, so i got these guys now these came in the kit uh not a kit uh a package whatever you have one of them that uh, rip cuts up to two foot across. So now I can rip four foot sheets right down the middle if need be, which I'm going to need for one of my cabinets. This one is, will do a cut up to four foot wide. So I can do the cross cuts to cut the four foot sheets down if need be. Um, there's also extension rails for this that you can get to make this up to eight foot long because it would do away with this, but I don't have the extension rails. So let's uh, open up some of these things, see what the hell's inside of them. And did I say, or not? this is not a sponsored video. Craig did not send me this stuff. I bought this out of my own pocket. So if it's no good, it's on me. You know, I buy this stuff and look at it and see if it's worth a shit then you don't have to spend your money if it's a piece of crap. But it's a Craig product. Chances are it's probably a pretty fucking good product. Everything that I've gotten from them has always been a pretty good product. Uh, I will put links to these things down below in the description. Now those links will be Amazon affiliate links, which means if you buy anything off of that link, clicking on it, I will get a small percentage of the profit. And I don't know how much of a percentage is. It's not very much. So it's not going to keep Jeff Bezos from buying another spaceship. Okay. What all do we got in this guy here? 
register your product. We'll worry about that later. We got instructions. I hate instructions. Let's see, connect the edge guide to the rail. So here is our edge guide and it's got screws in here. Your edge guy's got two little uh, knobs on there and two holes. So it's pretty difficult to screw it up. All right, there's our edge guide. Orientate the filler strip. Are there any other screws with this? Doesn't look like it. Here is a filler strip. That goes in there, just like that. I don't know what that's for. The filler strip on the sled is shipped with the angled ribs facing up. These ribs support saw base with the angled leading edge, keeping the saw base flat on the sled when the set screws in the base plate clamps are tightened for a single base. All right, we don't give a shit about that. Now we need a saw. Now, this is supposed to be a universal sled. So this sled, once mounted on this saw, will be able to go from this track to the AccuCut track. So I don't have to fucking change sleds. Set that there. Then this guy. He's gonna go in here. Let's see here. H, remove the indexing stop from the sled. Loosen set screws in the base plate clamp. Slide your saw into plate under them. Position the saw on the sled with the front of the saw base against the step at the front of the sled. For saws with the blade on the left hand end of the motor, center the blade in the left center of the slot. So mine is on the left hand side of the motor, so we need to go to the center of this slot right here. So I gotta remove that stop. Okay, so it's got a nut underneath. Slide that up. All right, place the plate configuration. There are two holes for attaching each base plate clamp to the sled. For the most secure clamping, choose the holes that provide the widest spacing. Allowed by your saw, the clamps can be orientated at any, any angle. Tighten the set screws into the securing hold the saw, but do not over tighten. Make sure the saw blade guard operates freely. It does. Okay.
check the position of the cursor. There are two positions on the sled for the cursor that correspond to the two slots. Position the cursor in the holder in front of the saw blade. To switch cursor positions, press down on the holder lock, slide the cursor out of the holder and reinstall it into the other holder. So, take that out. So now we gotta, how do we line this up? The indexing stop allows you to remove the saw from the sled assembly, then remount in exactly the same position. For maximum positioning flexibility, the sled is slotted and the indexing stop rotates 180 degrees. It looks like we will place that right over on this side here. We need to line up our cursor here. There we go, I think we need to make, all right. Slide the sled into the rail. Where does it slide in at? Right. Now we need to cut something real quick and see if we need to dial in our, uh, what do you call it? Indicator, indicator line. Uh, I think I got a piece of plywood over here. We're just gonna drop our blade down enough that it'll make a little bit of a cut. All right, so. That was a royal pain in the ass. <clears throat> not that this is a bad design. It's just not designed to try and rip a board like this that is not secured. But, fuck. Just by eyeballing it, I uh, my cut is off by about a 64th of an inch that way. So I need to slide the uh, indicator one click to the left to bring the blade to the right. And then this thing will be freaking spot on. So I need to go one click. Now that indicator is gonna be spot on. We don't need that no more. Oh, we can take and pull our saw. Off of this. And we'll set this guy aside. And we'll get the other one out over here. Now, because it's supposed to be a universal base, it's already set up. We'll set the saw out of the way. Yep, same base. So now I got an extra base. We can just put this over in the drawer. We got, let's see. Uh, Ah, okay. It's got two rails. These are tiny little fucking screws. We need a tiny little screwdriver.
All right, where does this guy go? Oh, I bet you this is some sort of clamping stop. Starting block. That would go down on this end. That just goes in like that. Is this the same? Yeah, yep, universal sled. It just slides right along that edge. And the blade is just freaking clear. It might shave a hair freaking. All right, so where the hell was I? Remember where I left off, because it uh, seems like every time I turn my camera on, somebody comes into the shop and needs me to go out and, and fix something else. It's, it's really hard to fucking do YouTube. YouTube's a pain in the ass. I guess it wouldn't be if it was the only thing that I had to do in life, but I've got too many other things to do. I've got the saw mounted on here. I got the track all freaking laid out. Uh, I was trying to figure out how do you clamp this thing? You don't really need to clamp it. On the back side, you've got the starter freaking thing that goes into the back of the rail. It has these things right here, that's a fence. That's gonna go up against whatever material you're getting ready to cut. And once that slides in, locks into place, you just push that right up against whatever material you're gonna cut and it's flat and it's square to the freaking fence. Line up this, uh, let me turn that camera down just a hair here so you can, yeah. All right, this blue strip right here, if you got, Measure over, say you want to cut two foot. Measure over two foot here. Go over that side, measure over two foot. Line this edge up and that edge up and make sure it's all square and it's lined up with your freaking marks. And then you run your saw down. I've got it already dialed in on the track so that this blade is literally just barely kissing this fucking uh, blue line right there. When you run it down, Wherever this blue line is, is where that blade's going to cut. So it's going to be super easy to freaking set up and cut with. And that was, that was like super, super lucky because I dialed it in on the, uh, on this one. Uh, I don't remember what this one was called. The rip cut. I dialed it in on the rip cut and when I placed it on here, it was like perfectly freaking dialed in already. So I didn't have to do any adjustment and go back and mess the thing. So that was lucky on my part. Now this might actually work better with a non-worm gear drive saw because this saw is kind of heavy. But, and you know, your, your smaller scale saws probably will fit on here better. But this fits on here nice. And the thing I like about these worm gear drive saws is they will fucking rip through anything. So if you got three quarter inch sheet of, uh, of uh, oak and you're trying to cut through it, this thing is going to rip through it. If you wanna cut your tailgate on your pickup in half, this thing is gonna cut through it. Uh, I've seen someone actually do that because they didn't realize how freaking far down they had their uh, uh, blade. They didn't cut all the way through it. They, they cut a nice, groove down the length of their tailgate because they weren't paying attention didn't realize how far down their depth of their saw was but anyways all right this is pretty easy to set up the instructions are minimal doesn't take much to dial it in so now we can break down sheet goods relatively simply so now we got to deal with the uh pocket hole jig set so i gotta disassemble this get it out of the way 
let's see what is in the 720 Pro pocket hole jig set. I've shown this off on another video. If you want to know what it is, it's a... Uh, fuck, I don't remember what it's called. It's a, it's a Gerber Pry X or some shit like that. If I think about it, I'll put a link to this cool little tool. It's just a... a uses the number 11 and X-Acto blade, replaceable. One of my favorite freaking tools that I've gotten in my shop. We got, we got a wedge of cardboard. We have some pliers, clamps, I should say. Are these auto freaking aligning? I think they are, fuck, I need a board. Yeah. Oh, man, that's fucking cool. It auto freaking sets up tension. Cool. Once again, this isn't a sponsored freaking video. It just, <laughs> that's fucking cool. Instructions. What is this? Adaptive cutting system. Hey, I just bought that. All right. Bag of one and a half inch pocket hole screws. There's, I think, 150 count in there. We got drill bit. Should close that blade before I eviscerate myself. Here is our pocket hole drill. <clears throat> Set that out. Driver bit, driver bit, uh, some sort of tool and a stop bit, or a, what do you call it, depth stop. Plastic thingamajiggers. This one filled with something. More cardboard, more cardboard. See what we got hanging on here. Plastic. We have one and a quarter and two and a half inch. How's that open? Ah, there we go. Gotta tear the corner tabs off. We got Kickstarter pack, one and three quarter, 125 count, I think is that. And then two and a half inch ones, 60 count. Oh, sorry. It's 100 count and 60 count. Cool thing about these uh, Craig uh, screw sets that you get, they're stackable, reusable, awesome little storage bins.
I've got these two and a half inch ones and all of their freaking screw bits, all of them freaking interlock and stack. So when you're, when it's empty, you can go buy refills or just use them for, you know, other shit. Because <laughs> every shop needs a lot more shit. And it's like, why would I need a bolt bin over there full of stuff when I can just have these little plastic containers scattered everywhere? All right, let's figure out how to put this thing together and see what's all in it. That looks like probably dust collection, which means it's not something I'm going to, to have to utilize. Okay, where is number one? Connect the dock adapters to the jig. What are dock adapters? They look like Lego pieces. Where are those at? Those aren't them. They might be in this thing. Oh yeah, here. Some freaking, we got assembly pieces in here. Hold down clamp. Oh, dock adapters. Cool little knobby things. All right, where do the dock adapters go? Dock adapters go. They are Legos. Push in, slide over. Well, I guess not. Come on, fucker. Ah, oh, there we go. God, did I turn my volume on? Okay, that one's on. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I hit record. Shit. I thought I forgot to do something. I always forget to do something. Can't understand why. All right, dock adapters are on. Connect the material support wing to the dock adapters. Let's see which side goes to. Okay, this side goes over here. That one goes there. Lock, lock, all right, that's cool. All right, number three, optional, mount the dock adapters to a work surface. We're not gonna do that. Assemble the adjustable stop base. Let's see here. That looks like that. And then we need these guys here. So, let's see. That goes through there. Down like that. Square nut goes in round hole. That goes there. Attach the adjustable stop arm to the adjustable stop base. Tab A into slot B. I guess here it's tab one and slot J. No, slot two. Okay. And then that goes, where the fuck does that go? Maybe it's next page. No, nope, it's not the next page.
slide a notch in the adjustable stop arm down over the tab, adjustable stop base, until the adjustable stop arm J is fully seated in the tab one. Okay, well, I got that all done. Not sure where this thing goes just yet. Maybe we'll get to it later. I guess this can go in several different configurations. Oh, I know how it works. That must go on like, like that right there. So you can set up stop block. All right. Let's see, determine the material thickness and set the collar stop. Use the hex nut. Okay, the material thickness. That's what this guy does right here. We need our drill bit. The drill bit. Let's see here if you can see that. All right. Drill bit's laid out. And there is a window on it. So if you've got inch and a half material, just line that up in the window. Three quarter, half inch. This also has indicators on it. So let's find a block of wood. Got some freaking pine right here. Let's go like this. It is not fully three quarters of an inch. <coughs> now let's see, how do you do it? If your material thickness falls within the range, use the same setup techniques as three quarter range with a one and a half inch screw. Use the material thickness gauge to determine the material thickness range. Set the stop collar F by placing it on drill bit and align the window of the stop collar with the measurement thickness range determined in step A. Yeah. Well, I fall. All right. So you don't have to be on one of the setup lines. This indicates that this is considered three quarter inch even though three quarter inch would be all the way up there. This block of wood falls in the three quarter inch block. Put your window over the three quarter inch window or the three quarter inch indicator, whatever. Tighten that down good. Then uh, let's see, if you are using the dock stations, fold the material support wings. If you are not using, okay. Position your workpiece. Let's see, place your workpiece in the jig and use the drill guide to align it. What would be the drill guide? I guess it just depends on where I want to place the, uh... now I'm bring camera around here. All right, now here's our drill holes. You can see that. All right, this thing will auto adjust to whatever thickness of material got. So you get to determine where you want to put your pocket holes, of course. With this piece, you know, I can do a pocket hole here and pocket hole here. So I just bring it down, lock it into place. I need a drill. Where's my drill? We are locked in. We've got the collar set.
Pop it up. Two perfectly drilled freaking pocket holes. So if you got a big wide piece, you can set your, uh, your uh, where's it at? This thing here, if you want to run it over, figure out <coughs> depths, you can do it on either side. This, uh, I don't know what that's for. Let's see if there's something in the instructions. Let's see. Mm. Oh, there it is. Okay. If you need to clamp it onto a work surface, this, this here slides. Is that still on camera? Yeah. All right. That slides into here so we can clamp this guy down. That makes sense. And then when you're done doing everything for the day, opens the up, bit, gauge, another bit, um, I think that's a dust collection freaking device right there. I think that's all the tools. That's gonna snap down, snap down. Fold up, lock in place, fold up. Lock in place. Okay, now I think I am ready to try and start building some cabinets. Might wanna go get some more screws. I probably got enough in there. Friggin' the Craig 720, is it 720? Yep, Craig pocket hole jig 720 Pro kit. Got the uh, Craig rip cut, the Craig accu cut. Now the rip cut and accu cut, I'm pretty sure I said earlier, they came as a package deal. This was with tax $180 for the two skill saw fucking ripping things. This set right here was $149. I bought them all at the same time. So, you know, 260, I think it was $272 with tax. Not too bad. Uh, I think it's going to make life a lot easier when I start making cabinets because not only do I have the cabinets out here in the shop that I want to make, I got to make cabinets up in the garage because all I have up in the garage is uh, shelves. And you know what shelves are? They're just a storage area for shit. When you walk in and you dump something on the shelf and that's where it sits. And there, I have so much crap in there. And I've hit a point in time in my life where it's like, I can't throw that away. I might need that someday. But I don't want to look at it, so I got to build some cabinets. All of this stuff is going to be very important. And if you're using pocket hole joinery and someone tells you you're not a real carpenter, tell them to go fuck themselves. Because it's still joinery. It doesn't matter. You don't have to do fancy dado joints and, 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 and rabbit, and not rabbit joints, rabbit joints are freaking dados and, and dovetails and box joints and everything. It's unnecessary pocket hole joinery works great. Not only does pocket hole joinery work great, there is also an easier way to do freaking joinery if you don't want to buy this. Let me move the camera over here and I'll show you probably the, the most difficult joinery you're ever going to find in your life that I have mastered. Right here. It is the butt joint. It's like having a doobie stuck in your ass crack. And angle irons. If you're just building a cabinet and you want strength and rigidity and you don't give a shit about uh, aesthetics, how it looks, if you're not trying to sell it to somebody, it's for your shop infrastructure, whatever, something, you just need something functional. Right here works freaking great. Don't worry about what anybody else freaking tells you because, well, for the most part, people are assholes. I know I am one. Anyways, guys. That's all the Craig shit that I just bought that I'm going to need to make my new ca uh, cabinets. Stay tuned. Subscribe. Turn on that notification so you will see when I make them cabinets.
Because right here is going to be a freaking paint station. It's going to be bent into the outside of the building. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to be able to actually spray paint in this shop without just stinking it up. Plus, with my new heater in here, it might be an explosion hazard if I just started spray painting in here. And I don't, I don't want to blow up. Anyways, till next time. See ya.